Good morning. Welcome to Boardroom Media. We're joined once again by the CEO of XM, Peter Maguire, for the XM.com weekly market update. Pete, good morning. Good morning, Andrew. Plenty of activity again. <laughs> Understatement. Data everywhere. We'll start domestically again. The RBA cash rate, where well, the RBA is meeting today. In a couple of hours' time. Yep. Bound to put up interest rates again. Expectation, 50 basis points. Yeah, 60% are saying it's over, probably 60, 65%. Analysts are saying 50 I'm, I'm in that camp and I think it's pretty hard not to be considering what we're doing globally, you know, ECB, everyone pedal to the metal. Mm. So, yep, here we go, a couple of hours time and uh, we'll just sit on the edge of our seats. Yep, a little bit more pain for the uh, mortgage holders out there, So, which yep. takes us into the next slide. Last week we had the uh, new home loans came out, Yeah, uh, dropped about 7%. The market was expecting a drop of about 3%. Mm, so shot to the downside. Very much so. And it, it plays into the interest rate story certainly does. So it'll be interesting to see how we are in November. If we have a couple more rate rises, September and October, then where are we in November with um, home loans? Definitely. And by that stage, we'll have the new CPI data. Yeah. It doesn't come out for roughly six or seven weeks. That's so, right. Uh, it'll be interesting to see where that lands at the end of October. Yeah. Aussie dollar, here's an interesting chart. You look at the correlation between the Aussie dollar and the iron ore price and they pretty much track one another. They certainly do. And here we are at 68. Uh, is the 50 basis points already baked into the Aussie? That's going to be the interesting side if it, if it bounces today. If it doesn't bounce, then you know it was baked in. And the overall consensus is iron ore prices seem to be in a one-way direction at the moment, and that seems to be downward. We've had a high, as you see there, 160 bucks. It was looking very healthy going back to March, and here we are at 100. So. Uh, we're going to be at that 90 to 80 dollar level. Mm, very much. And I think obviously it relates to the, the Chinese market. And yeah. a lot of China is still currently in lockdown due to the... And the weather. Yeah, the weather. The weather is atrocious. It certainly is, yeah, yeah. And obviously what the, what's happening on the COVID front up there as well, which is yeah. not great. All and right. property. Well, ex Excuse yeah, exactly. me. <laughs> Let's head up to Europe. Pretty, pretty um, dire. Mm. Dire is a great word, <laughs> isn't it? It is a fantastic word. It just sums everything up very concisely. Uh, interest rates, uh, they're going to have to go up again in Europe. Yep. Talking half a percent again, yep. which is a big jump for them, but oh, certainly. it's clearly going to be needed. Well, I, you know, you're even hearing there's some analysts saying you need 75 basis points to really try and catch up because of what the Fed's going to do. Mm. And the second side of it is they're a long way behind the curve because their inflation's through 9% and they really have to play catch up quick if they're going to manage it with that sort of interest rate policy. Yeah, and I think um, the ongoing conflict in Ukraine and obviously the energy situation oh. at the moment is just completely out of control. Yeah, I, again, where are we in November where it starts to, I've been in, I go to Vienna every year for the OPEC at the end of November, it's frightfully cold. Mm. And you can imagine if you didn't have any heating there, what it's going to be like. So yeah, gas prices, inflation, wrap it all together and you've got a dire situation. Certainly do. Uh, con consumer confidence, oh. economic outlook, it's not flash at all. No, if you can make the grey out in that chart, because I had to really get my eyes to go, wow, it's recession, it's the bottom one on the right hand side mm. and that, that in grey, and it's nearly a continuance over the last 22 years. There's more recession than non-recessionary periods. I know, so maybe the euro hasn't worked out what they... Uh at first thought. Oh, you know, Jimmy Rogers, I remember him. I, I had the good fortune, Soros's partner in the Quantum Fund, and I spent about oh, a couple of mornings up at Hong Kong with him in 06, up at the Four Seasons place. And we, he rides the push bike, and I spent about an hour and a half with him on a couple of mornings. And he said, and he was on Bloomberg at the time, saying the euro really is not going to survive post-2020. Mm. And I always you know, kept that in the back of my mind. Here we are in 22, and is it going to survive? We've already had the first leg out being the UK, so yeah, they've got some tough times ahead of them, the old uh, Europeans. Certainly have. And inflation, once again, the expectation is inflation will rise mm. before it falls. I think so. Mm. Well, is it going to be, how quickly is it through that double figure, 10%? Turkey, I was just saying to you off air, 80%, 8-0. Mm. I mean, that's just incredible. Mm. 
and a lot of those high energy prices probably aren't um, baked, in, baked in. into these figures yet. No, yeah, definitely. So uh, yeah, not looking to crash hot there. Uh, US had non-farm payrolls last week, yeah. 315,000, not a bad number. No, it was a good number. Mm -hmm. Overall, it was a very good number. Yeah. In, uh, unemployment's gone from 3.5 to 3.7 per cent, and there's a hell of a lot of people looking for work, and as I was saying to you, the reason why is because a majority of people aren't getting pay rises, and they're trying to um, work a pay rise into a new, a new position, mm -hmm. and that seems to be the effect out there. Yeah, but plenty of jobs available. Yes. Uh, the two and the ten year. There's probably 20, 25 basis point difference at the moment. Yeah. So inverse, obviously, which tends to talk to a recession. Mm, absolutely. Uh, but, yeah, the, but even the 10 years just crept up a little bit recently as well. Yeah. So on the back of the, the, the various Fed. Fed members commentary, which oh. are very aggressive at the moment about yeah. a potential 75 point rise. Definitely. Mm. Absolutely, so yes. It's, uh, the momentum, yeah. and uh, if we'll just see how that runs by Christmas. Trying to talk the market down a bit. They've been fairly successful in the last week or two. So yeah. Uh, finally, we can have a look at the currencies. Wow, that's a, it. Looks like a, you know, you see that New Zealand dollar and the Aussie, and uh, we're the best. Well, I suppose the best of a bad bunch. Yes. In there, maybe Swiss franc. Hmm. The yen has been, that's the one down the bottom. Have a look at it. The yen's just been capitulated. Mm. You know, we've gone from 125, 130 yen to 141 now. British pounds got hammered 114 yesterday. It's back at 115 on today. Euro was 99.20. Now, it's, I've just made a note there, 99.65. We were shut last night in the States because of Labor Day. So the US, the markets didn't open as far as stock market, but certainly energy was... Flat lined was a bit sh choppy. Um, silver was up, gold was up a little bit, but yeah, that US dollar index still at that 109.40 sort of handle. Well, it's, it's the place to be. Place the US, to be, King yeah, Dollar, man. Certainly is, and especially with the interest rate differentials as well. It's clear that, you know, if they've got higher interest rates in the US, it's going to attract the, attract the money anyway. So. Oh, absolutely. Have a look. You just can't believe that yen. What a, that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Tom, I've told you a hundred times. Time to travel to Japan is now. With US dollars. Certainly is. You'd buy the palace. <laughs> All right. Well, that's a wrap again for the week, Pete. So uh, we'll catch up again next week. Yeah. Plenty of data coming out later this week again. Uh, it's a good week. It we'll... really is. It was a dynamic week last week, Andrew. It was outstanding for traders because of the volatility with those currencies. And I think that this week won't disappoint. Uh, I'm looking for some fairly heavy... Um, whip soaring for, across markets with those interest rate policies. We've got a new PM coming in the UK. Yeah, that's been announced, definitely. So, yeah, yeah she's got her hands full. Certainly has, yeah. All right, we'll see how all that pans out. But once again, thanks for joining us, Pete. And that's the XM.com weekly market update on Boardroom Media.